You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum, and the Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good evening, and hello, kids, something I'm not used to saying. Welcome to Season 3 and Episode number 77 of The Daily Beaver here on the Cryer Media Network. Today is recording day, well, not today is recording day, today recording day is Thursday, <laughs> March 16th, 2023, and it has been a bright sunny day with some snow melt here at the Beaver Lodge. Uh, and what was a little disconcerting is that even though there was lots of snow, uh, we saw bugs. Yeah, <laughs> bugs outside. Uh, we saw a couple of flies inside the house a couple of weeks ago, but actual bugs inside. Oh, my word. Um, so, yeah, uh, springs are coming fast. Uh, <laughs> uh, our uh, producer here says that we did too. And I say producer because... Um, unfortunately, uh, I am Saint Mr. Grizzly tonight. Um, I'm your host, the Eager Beaver, pronouns he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver, eh? And of course, a big thank you goes to our podcast's founding sponsors, The Pepper Master, The Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Mood Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com. Uh, this is a take two, part two. <laughs> <laughs> of our Thursday morning nibble, uh, and we're recording it in the evening, early evening hour, because, well, yours truly was so sleep-deprived that I slept right through my alarm last night. Actually, what kind of happened is, um, for the kids who are uh, following uh, my curling uh, activities, uh, last night was the last match of the season for my mixed doubles team, and uh, we were hopefully trying to get first place in our division. Uh, we would have had to have a, a win and a loss from uh, another team. Uh, and we were playing against a team we've never beaten. And uh, we beat them on a really, really kick-ass cool last shot. Uh, so that secured uh, second place for us in our pool, which means that next year we might be moving up to A division. Last year we won C, so that's big progress. And I I think top two might qualify us for the playoffs, so I'm waiting to hear about that. So I'm really excited because if it does, it was a win in your end situation, and on the last shot, we did it, which meant that I brought home the bacon, which meant that I was buzzing, which meant that I had lots of adrenaline, which means I did not get to sleep <laughs> at a regular hour. <laughs> and when I finally did go to bed, my beaver sweetie uh, was starfished throughout the bed and snoring, so I slept right there. And, uh, well, 
I just missed the alarm. And because my beaver sweetie wasn't there, he wasn't able to tap me on the shoulder to say, wake up, your alarm's ringing. (laughs) So thanks to Mr. Otter, our dear friend, uh, who says that he too saw bugs today. Um, He has offered us a hand and he is doing the production. And uh, we are able to bring you a bonus beaver show to make up for today. So thank you for your patience, Kits. We absolutely want to try to get a show out for you every day. So there we go. Um, Hello, Kit Ashley. Thank you for helping with this. Hello, Kit Linda M. I could get used to two beaver day diet, (laughs) two beaver a day diet. Ah, yes. Uh, Thank you. I love you so much. You're so good to me and to us. Uh, Hello, Kit Danielle. Ah, Happy Thursday to you as well. And Kit Ray, lovely to see you. (laughs) Not sure how you feel about an evening show usually sitting in my underwear trying to open my eyes when I'm watching. (laughs) I get you. I get you, my friend. Uh, I'm just happy that you're here. So you know what? (laughs) Uh, Your presence is welcome, whether your eyes are closed or not. Um, Today, because I am saw Mr. Grizzly, I'm not going to go into some uh, deep topics. I'm going to keep it light because there's some things that have happened, as you know, um, as if you um, if you have seen yesterday's show, which I think was posted on our YouTube. I don't think the podcast version is out yet, uh, but we recorded uh, uh, one in the evening for you to make up for the morning. Uh, and between the morning and the evening had come out the fact that um, the prime minister had named the special rapporteur to look into the whole thing with regard to election interference, particularly with China. But as other people have been calling also probably from other countries and for a longer period than the last two elections, um, it seems that a lot of people agree, or pretty much everybody agrees, that we need to look into this more, but not everybody agrees in what way or in what depth, even if we were going to be calling an inquiry at the moment, uh, a full public inquiry, what are the terms, you know, how far back do we look at just China? Do we look at just the two years, last two years? Do we look at more? Uh, do we look at um, trying to find out what exactly happened, you know, what's going on underground that's a little seedy, or do we just you know, look at it from a perspective that, you know, well, election interference is more and more common and more and more countries are getting into the game because it costs less and less and it's easier to to do. And so how do we guard against that? And, you know, are we bringing in concepts like deep fakes and that type of stuff that could also, you know, lead to swaying, um, elections because artificial intelligence and that type of stuff is getting much more advanced rather quickly. And, you know, we're going to get to a point if we keep down this path of not trusting anyone at all, because you got to trust somebody sometime. So if we trust, don't trust everyone at all. And if every time we announce someone, the first thing we look to do is to discredit them or tear them apart, we're going to end we start having deep fakes that are very credible, we're going to get to a point where none of us is going to be able to tell what's true and what's not. And we won't know what the credible sources are. Uh, and that could be a really, really hot mess. So um, there's a lot of ways that these types of things can go. Now with the rapporteur, it doesn't mean that we aren't going to have a public inquiry. Eventually we very might well have that. Um, but it's probably not a decision that the prime minister wanted to make himself Um, because you get all these situations then, well, you know, why this and why this subject and why this person? And so by having a rapporteur look into everything and determining whether or not one would really be needed, if so, what is the scope? If not, what other mechanism we could use will be a useful tool. Um, when you're talking about the people in the intelligence community, you have some people that want it and some people that don't, uh, or well, not so much don't, but don't really see how much will be able to be gained by virtue of the fact that how much will have to remain hidden. So it really is up in the air. Um, and you know, a lot of the opposition um, are talking about this as if there really is only one solution and it is a full public inquiry you know, to the exclusion of everything else. Um, but again, as we mentioned all public inquiries are not created equal. It depends on terms of reference and scope and definition. And so, you know, <laughs> it, we're a bit we're a bit in the same situation as we were when we were dealing with electoral reform. To be totally honest, um, where you know the prime minister formed the initial committee and then everybody got upset because because the prime minister had a majority, the liberals had a majority on the committee, and they said, "Well, the fix would be in." 
So then he removed uh, himself or the party as having the majority on the committee. And the liberals, even though it's sort of known in circles that they would have preferred uh, ranked ballots as the electoral, uh, de- the democratic reform change, didn't really advocate or push for that position because you're in a situation that, well, when you're the government in power, automatically the default assumption or the default, or the, let's say the easy attack is that you're doing this to benefit yourself, right? It's just sitting right there. And I mean, then how do you prove a negative? So he gave away his majority on that. And then he handed it to the four opposition parties and said, okay, you figure it out. And they didn't, they couldn't agree whatsoever. Now they produced a report where they said that they agreed that, you know, we should do X, Y, and Z and have a referendum. But, you know, they had these annexes in the back and they, you know, had more details as to what they want. And then you could see if you read those, you see, you saw where they disagreed. Uh, Somebody had described it as never have, differences been so elegantly wallpapered over <laughs> in order to make it work. So when they agreed that there should be a referendum, they couldn't agree on the referendum. So that's why they punted it back to the prime minister and says, well, you decide on the referendum and you decide on what's going to be, you know, what are the choices that are going to be on the referendum and what the threshold is going to be. And all of that would have just created more fights. So we have this situation here where the prime minister is naming the rapporteur, right? Well, let's be honest, there's nobody he was going to name that was going to make everybody happy. So I kind of wish in one way he would have lobbed that grenade back into their camps and just handed it to the four opposition parties and say, hey, you guys come up with a rapporteur and then sit back and watch them tear tear each other apart. (laughs) Uh, But that didn't happen because, of course, in a matter like this, particularly with national security, you want to make sure that you don't. It's not like electoral reform where there's not a matter of national security there and you can go and you can debate it out. But when there's national security, you want to limit the number of people seeing that information or determining how that information is going to come out. Uh, so that's a reign that he couldn't let go of. But I really would have liked to have seen because it would have been delicious because we would have seen them not to be. They would have either agreed on somebody so awful that would not have met with public opinion or they would have not been able to agree because there's nobody that would have satisfied the conservatives that would have also satisfied the NDP on this. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Let's be honest. So um, we've got a situation where the prime minister did something absolutely amazing and found somebody that, well, I don't know about you, but throughout my entire lifetime, um, David Johnston has been known as someone who is decent and kind and thoughtful and thorough and rigorous and definitely with the ability to speak truth to power and not afraid to do so. Um, So I'm not sure what changed between the time that they named this guy governor general. And not only did they name this guy governor general, oh, no, 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 no. They liked him so much they extended his term by two years. So he's governor general for seven not five, seven. But now he's bought and paid for and can't be trusted. Uh, I, I don't think, if you're asking me between the Conservative Party in Canada and David Johnston, who's changed the most since he's been Governor General, I'm going to guess it's not David Johnston. <laughs> <laughs> yep, Kesket Linda Sim says the only thing that changed is that Trudeau chose him. That's all it took. And since we have, hello, Mr. Grizzly. Thank hey, you Mr. Me. Beaver. How you doing? How you doing? I'm exhausted. I just thought I'd pop in real quick. I can't stay long. I, I have to go to bed. I'm yes. wiped out. I had a killer of a day. And uh, I'm sure you can hear it in my voice. I'm just exhausted. Yeah, I, I got to go to sleep. But uh, I will see you and all the beautiful kits at 7 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, enjoy the rest of the show, everybody. Uh, sorry, I can't give you anything. I'm I'm really tired. <laughs> but uh, okay. Mr. Beaver, you can ride this ship. Uh, you've got a good man in control tonight. And I'm going to head to bed. But uh, we'll see you in the morning. All right. Good night to you, good friend. Thank you for stopping in. Oh, how sweet is that? I love that guy. 
<laughs> oh, Kit Allen, I finally got into a live and Paul is leaving. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> he is wet though. He has been working very, 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 very hard and like not only for us. So, um, yeah, personal care. We're a big fan of it here. You know, to always take time for self-care. Uh, so, uh, I found out, well, not found out. It was public knowledge. It was sitting there the whole time. And I wish Mr. Grizzly had stayed because he's there. Uh, but we'll talk about it a little on the show. I'll present it to him. Uh, he'll be, might be a little surprised. Uh, but it turns out, uh, that while everybody is talking about, um, the former governor general's conflicts or prime minister's conflicts. And you have to understand that there's a lot of people going like, I'm not questioning the governor general's integrity. And then they go and question it. Or they say, well, the governor general had integrity, but I guess he doesn't every more because a man with integrity would have never accepted this position. <laughs> like Just these stupid things, right? So if by virtue of accepting the position of being the special rapporteur, that makes you corrupt. Uh, and if you've ever had any connection to a Trudeau in any way, shape, or form, you're intentionally corrupt. Uh, that means pretty much the only person that would satisfy the conservatives would have been probably Stephen Harper as the rapporteur. And even then, if Trudeau had named him, I'm not sure the former prime minister would have survived the character assassination. <laughs> I mean, these... They're literally shameless. Um, but it uh, seems that one of the board members of the Trudeau Foundation is, um, uh, oh, darn, uh, Sarah, no. Oh, uh, darn, I'm forgetting the name because there are two people. And, ah, darn. You know what? Uh, let's save that for tomorrow morning. I'm going to just do that a little tease. But let's just say that... Um, some of the at least one reporter who is gleefully um, doing a hatchet job on Mr. Johnston's reputation while trying to create the semblance of illusion that, oh, no, 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 I'm not doing that at all, um, is related to a member of the board of the Trudeau Foundation and therefore has a conflict that they have not disclosed while they're talking about the conflicts of others. This is messy and greasy, folks. <laughs> I'm just saying. So I'm just going to show a little leg or a little fly on that one, and uh, we'll leave it there because I think we'll all love to see Mr. Grizzly's reaction to that <laughs> when I talk about it. So that's a little tease for what's going on there. There's a whole bunch of other stuff. But let's have... Well, you know, let's celebrate some good things because the news has been heavy. And let's talk about some Canadians who have done us proud of late. And we're going to focus pretty much on that for the rest of the show, kids. Um, now, as you know, we had the Oscars just the other day. And my favorite movie of the year, Everything... <laughs> everywhere all at once uh swept the oscars when I, be, I believe seven academy awards uh which i called it uh michelle yao won called it jamie lee curtis won called it uh best supporting actor and i don't remember his name off the top of my head and that's terrible because i should uh he also won uh and what was really interesting um is that he that, uh, that man, and I'm going to try and find his name uh, to say it for you, not young man, I guess, that actor, um, was in Encino Man, along with Brendan Fraser. Uh, and both of them sort of got left behind by the film industry. And then in the same year, both of them happened to be nominated for Oscars. And in the same year, they both win. <laughs> How's that for a story? How's that for a story? Huh. So, Kei Hui Kwan is uh, his name. Uh, if you, you if you think you might have seen him before, it was as a child actor. So you have seen him in Raiders of the Lost Ark uh, with Harrison Ford, and you would have seen him uh, in Goonies. 
which were the his two, two big movies back from the time. Uh, and in a poetic fashion, uh, the best film Oscar was presented by Harrison Ford. So um, they had a moment together on stage as well at the Oscars, which was really, really nice. I appreciated that a lot. But Oscars... Yes, yes, Mr. Otter is there saying that that's you, you. You read my mind, Mr. Otter. Montreal Barn, Adrian Moreau also won an Oscar for Brendan Fraser's movie, The Whale. And that's exactly where we're going. So I'm thank, I thank you for mentioning that, Mr. Otter, uh, because we are going to bring that up because the Oscars this year, uh, if you were paying attention, Kits, was pretty much like Canada Day. It was Canada Day at the Oscars. Uh, we had people win stuff left, right, and center. It was really, really amazing. Um, so, uh, Mr. Otter, I don't know if we can uh, bring some stuff up, but I'm going to put some share screens, if you would. And there we go. So this is exactly uh, of who, about whom uh, Mr. Otter was speaking about. This right here is Adrian Moreau, uh, who won for, uh, shared the award with the other two uh, ladies in this photo here, uh, the award for makeup and hairstyling for The Whale. And uh, he was nominated before, actually, uh, for the movie, um, I think it, Barney's version, yes, in 2010. Uh, so there's an Oscar for him. And then we have this guy here, uh, documentary director, um, Daniel Rohrer, who won the Oscar for Best Documentary Feature for Navalny, which is a documentary about uh, Navalny, um, who's um, the Russian uh, person who is Vladimir Putin's most strongest, most popular political opponent. Uh, and uh, uh, they tried to poison him. And uh, when he went out of country to get medical help, then I think they had determined that he had violated terms of something and that he they put a warrant out for his arrest and he actually flew back to Russia where he was arrested on the spot and then thrown in jail uh, where it is suspected um, that he is being treated extremely, extremely <laughs> uh, harshly. So um, this is a movie, um, a documentary about him and this lady right here in red is uh, Navalny's wife, Yulia Navalny, uh, who was... Um, also in attendance and uh, said a few words uh, when the award was given. So that was a pretty uh, moving movement. And uh, I don't remember the person's name, unfortunately, but there was another Canadian uh, director that was nominated in this category as well. So lots of good stuff. Um, I'm going to take this down here while I'm scrolling so I don't make anybody too dizzy. <laughs> I'll do that. All right, and then let's put this back up. There we go. The next one, of course, uh, you'd have to be in living under a rock to not know it, but uh, Brendan Fraser, who won uh, the Best Actor Oscar first comeback performance in The Whale. Um, and again, a uh, very touching moment uh, with his acceptance speech. And then this is the one that made me very, 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 very happy. The amazing, the wonderful, the brave, um, honest, you know, emotions on your sleeve. Just, I love this, this, this lady, um, Sarah Polly, who won the Academy Award for Best Adapted Screenplay for the film M Women Talking. Um, she was nominated twice. She was also nominated for Best Picture. Uh, but this is absolutely fantastic. And this, too, is her second nomination. She was nominated uh, for her film Away From Her, if I remember correctly, uh, which I believe is about Alzheimer's and also uh, a very touching movie. So that's absolutely just great news. And then this wasn't at the Oscar ceremony itself. It uh, happened in November, uh, but the, you know they have that section in the Oscars where they announce the technical awards and all that all that other stuff. Well, uh, back in November, Michael J. Fox was awarded the Gene Herschelt Humanitarian Oscar uh, for his philanthropic philanthropic efforts that have raised one point five billion dollars for Parkinson's research. So, um, and then uh, we had. 
you know, there were other uh, Canadian Oscar nominees, for example, like in the the animated shorts, uh, people from the National Film Board were also nominated. So there, were, there was a lot to, to do. There was a lot that happened. And there were some uh, moments of history. Um, the person that had won the Oscar for uh, wardrobe and costume design uh, is the first person of color, I believe, to win multiple Oscars in Oscar history. So that was uh, interesting. And there was also um, a short film, I believe, from India, which won an Oscar, which ended up, I think, being the first film, uh, first Oscar for an Indian production. And then there was another film, uh, RRR, which I had not heard of at all before the Oscars. And um, it's I made a mistake when I was talking about it because I had assumed that it was a Bollywood movie, uh, and it is not. It comes from uh, another region. Um, I was wondering, you know, if somebody could uh, inform me if this was the first Bollywood movie uh, that was uh, ever um, that ever got an Oscar. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, somebody told me uh, what type of uh, movie it was, and I cannot find it off the top of my head. Uh, unfortunately, I'm so sorry, kids. But uh, for the Oscar for that film, um, when the acceptance speech came along, um, there were two people, two women, who were accepting the award. And uh, one of them gave her acceptance speech. And as the other one came to the mic uh, to talk a little, um, her time was cut off. And somebody else had noticed uh, that in another category, when it was uh, British people who had won, and there were two people, um, not only did the first person who spoke got more time, um, but the second person was also allowed then to speak. And people were wondering what that was about. And um, I wish I could find it for you kids. <laughs> uh, but somebody posted, uh, because behind the scenes, uh, the lady that didn't get a chance to speak uh, got to speak with because there are other cameras and stuff that goes for the world onto the web and that type of stuff. So they do produce other content. Uh, and um, what she had to say would have been really worth hearing. So it's kind of a shame that she did not get to uh, say that on stage. Uh, and uh, if you see me, my eyes darting back and forth is because I'm trying to find the spot <laughs> on the Twitter feed where I retweeted it so that I could show it to you. But Unfortunately, I have not been able to successfully find it, so uh, I am going to <laughs> move on to the next subject so that I stop speaking in a stilted manner and trying to stretch time in order to be able to find it. Uh, and hopefully I'll have that for you for tomorrow's show. In other news uh, that has made us proud, we've had the Junos on Monday, and uh, there were a lot of awards. The big winner that night was The weekend, uh, which was kind of nice because he kind of got snubbed rather hard at the Grammys. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, But he uh, basically took home the hardware, he took home the hardware. He got it from Single of the Year for his song Sacrifice, Album of the Year, and Pop Album of the Year for his album Donna Femme, Songwriter of the Year, Artist of the Year, um, just I mean, he took the big awards, so that was uh, great for him, and well-deserved, because he puts out some really good quality stuff. Um, and uh, Group of the Year was the Arkells, the TikTok fan, TikTok fan choice of the year uh, was uh, Avril Lavigne. I have a feeling maybe that that category's name will change <laughs> for next year, knows? Maybe not. Who knows? Uh, and of course, we all know about the, stre the streaking ex incident. Uh, the young lady uh, involved has uh, said in the press that she's not upset at all uh, with Avril Lavigne for having <laughs> told her what she could do. <laughs> uh, the Breakthrough Artist of the Year was Preston Pablo. The Breakthrough Group of the Year was Banks and Ranks. The Country Album of the Year was Masquerades by Tennille Towers. Uh, because Mr. Grizzly loves the jazz, I made note of the jazz categories. The vocal jazz album uh, was called Featuring by Katie Georgie. 
the best solo jazz album was Kind of Love by Rene Rosnes, and the jazz album by group was Desert Bloom by the Florin Hoefner Trio. The rap album of the year was Continue, or Shall I Continue by Toby, and the dance song of the year was Control Alt Delete by Rev from Montreal, uh, who we've talked about on the show as well. Um, I discovered this year, and uh, I like her music very much. Uh, she had um, uh, her first her first hit was called uh, Still Dancing, I believe, uh, which was really really good. But Control Alt Delete is a is a bit of a banger, so uh, well deserved. I'm happy she won that. Uh, other awards were won by the Sadies, uh, All Vays, Alexis on Fire, Les Louanges, Jesse Reyes, Michael Bublé, and the Beerhead Sisters. So, and of course, as we know, Nickelback was uh, inducted into the Canadian Music Hall of Fame after having uh, sold about 50 million albums worldwide So, over their career. So, there we go. That was the Junos. Go Canada. Uh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. What was that sound? That was the voice. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I'd pop in audio only. Uh, yeah. Uh, we really cleaned up this year. We, we did. really did. Oh, yeah. It was absolutely fantastic. Because, I mean, some years, it's like, even if we get one, one, one nomination at the Oscars, <laughs> <I know. laughs> right? it's like you're, you're perusing. It's like, are any Canadians nominated? How did we do? And this year was an embarrassment to riches. We were also nominated in Best Animated Feature, Domi Shi, who had won an Oscar for a short. Uh, She's uh, from oh, here wow. in Hamilton, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. She, she was the director of Turning Red. That's correct. Yes, which is uh, the first Disney movie that I believe that was set in Canada. Yeah. Or Pixar. Pixar. Yeah, movie. yeah. Uh, we we heard we heard rumblings about her back in August and September of last year, and I I I took note because she's local, and I heard her story and how she came up, and it was all through. Um, and I know everybody conservatives are going to hate to hear this through Canadian art grants and um, you know initiatives and being pushed by. Um, the, the, the opportunities that we give uh, our, our artists here in this country. So uh, I'm very proud of her and I'm very proud of us for putting her on that stage. Yeah, me too. So, and it's really cool because she already has an Oscar to her name, right? Yeah. From the animated short stuff. So yep. it just goes to prove that things like the National Film Board and whatnot, these types of incubators for shorts and whatnot really do pay off. These are good things. They really do. Yeah. Uh, I did find the clip, Mr. Uh, Mr. Otter, so I'm going to put it up there. Uh, there we go. Share. The volume's up. It's properly prompted, so I'm ready to go. All right. Spoke about 43 seconds, say her thank yous, talked about coexistence, and her producer, Gunit, steps up to say a few words. Immediately she gets met with that music of shame, telling her to get off the stage. Ouch. Right afterwards, Roy the Wolf, the Fox and the Horse won Best Animated Short Film for the filmmakers. Two white British men accept the award. Matthew speaks for 42 seconds, graciously accepting the award on behalf of his counterparts, thanks his family. Cool, right? This time, Charlie wants to speak too, but when he steps up, no music, no more embarrassing moments, he gets to speak. What's the difference? This was back to back. Why is the Indian woman silent and the white British man gets to say whatever he wants to say? Does her accent make you feel uncomfortable? You assume people don't want to hear what she has to say? It's worth thinking about. If she did have a chance, you might have heard this. Tonight is historic. This is the first Oscar for any Indian production. And two women here won this. I just want to say to all the women watching, the future is audacious. And the future is us. And the future is here. Thank you. Now, I would have loved to have seen, heard that on stage, right? <laughs> Wonder what the difference was. Hmm. <laughs> All right, from the arts and our artists to our athletes, 
uh, we had the Briar over the last week, and on the weekend was the final. And Brad Gushu's team of, of course, himself as Skip, Mark Nichols at Vice, E.G. Harnden, uh, who moved over from the Northern Ontario team, is now playing with him at uh, second, and Jeff Walker at lead, defeated Matt Dunstone, uh, the Matt Dunstone rink, 7-5 in the final to capture a record fifth Briar title as Skip. Now, there is one Canadian that has won more Briar titles, Randy Furby, but not as Skip. He has six titles, but only four of them as Skip. Uh, Brad Gushu said, It's pretty cool to be honest. I was reading through some of the messages that I've gotten over the last couple of days, and I have almost too many to read, but I've gotten through them. I got one from Ernie Richardson, and that was a special one for me, because of what he did in the 50s and 60s, and winning four out of five years during a time when there were so many teams in ice conditions weren't what they are now. I thought what he did was absolutely incredible. And just to be put that same sort of category and discussion, just to be put in that same sort of category and discussion, it's pretty special. Um, it's something I'm very proud of. Uh, interesting fact about Brad Gushu, he played in 13 Briars before finally capturing his first gold in 2017. He had won an Olympic gold medal in curling before he won a national championship. <laughs> and he did it at home in St. John's. And now he finds himself the winner of five of the last seven events. Just goes to show, persistence pays off. It's not bad to be a late bloomer. <laughs> uh, also, a historical moment for Canada in wheelchair rugby, where we had a women's team, full-fledged women's team, participate in an international tournament for the first time. Um, there was an event happened uh, in Paris where there were five teams. Uh, there was a team from Great Britain. There was the national team from Canada. And then there were three other teams uh, comprised uh, of the assembled together from various players from different European countries. And, um, of course, Great Britain won it all, but Team Canada, in their inaugural international wheelchair rugby tournament, took the bronze. They won two matches in the round robin and ended up in the third place in the, the third versus four match uh, and uh, took the bronze. So uh, congratulations to our team. Um, unfortunately, this event, uh, the Women's Cup, it's called 2023, is the only international wheelchair rugby event for women on the calendar. Uh, we need more. We need more. So, But it's a good start, and uh, Team Canada is doing well. You know, If there's only two nations in the world that have enough players to be able to field a full team, and we're one of them, yeah, yes. And let's hope the sport gains more popularity around the world. Uh, also talking about wheelchair sports, there was um, the World Wheelchair Curling uh, Championships as well. And they were going on in Richmond, BC. And Team Canada made the final uh, at a World Wheelchair. It's two men, two women. Uh, so it's a mixed team. And unfortunately, we lost 5-2 to China uh, in the final. But it's still a silver medal performance, which is uh, absolutely fantastic for our team. So congratulations to everyone that was involved um, because, you know, wheelchair curling um, for people who have never seen it is interesting in that, um, how would I put it? It's all arm because you're stationary. Somebody's holding the back of your chair. So it's not like you're sliding up to the hog line at all and then letting go of the rock you're completely stationary and the brooms on the the the, the stick the rock is on a stick and you're just pushing all with the arm so you don't have the advantage of a leg push or even if you know regular stick curling walking up and gaining some speed to go uh, along with your rock so these are athletes that really 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 do know how to hit a target and uh and not miss and play well so um it's quite a feat. Uh, so congratulations to the team. That was uh, very good stuff. Uh, our ski team, Alpine ski team, is still just on fire. It's ridiculous. Uh, over the weekend at Soldu uh, in Andorra, uh, I think Jeremy Reed, I believe it is. I might be wrong. Jeffrey or Jeremy. Don't quote me on the name. Uh, ended up in fifth place in the Super G. 
which is absolutely a fantastic result. And then in the downhill, Jack Crawford, who has been killing it this year, took a 13th and Cameron Alexander took a 14th. So both of these uh, skiers have been in the points many times with uh, Crawford having won some, well, both of them having won medals uh, on the cup. Uh, on the World Cup circuit this year. Um, Laurence Saint-Germain, fresh off her gold medal world championship performance, uh, ended up taking a fifth place at uh, the women's slalom in Ade, Sweden. And uh, this is Mr. Otter is showing us uh, the Ski Cross World Cup event. And I'm guessing that's a Canadian with the crystal globe there, Mr. Otter? Yes? Okay, I don't have any audio. <laughs> Sorry, it was the Alpine. Uh, it, it just said the Alpine event. I was just trying to grab some screenshots to go along with what you were talking about, but I oh. may have grabbed the wrong shot. I think so because yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, it was written ski cross on the on the banner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're paying attention, and I'm not. Thank you, sir. You're, you're welcome. But I appreciate the effort. Good try. Good assist. Good initiative. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing the compliment sandwich. You miss all the shots you don't take, Douglas, just so you know. <laughs> We're doing the compliment sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Have a bite. <laughs> Carry on. Uh, also in uh, Ade, uh, Sweden, the giant slalom, Valerie Grenier, who's also had a good season, took a sixth place there. Um in Osterberg, uh, during the mass start in cross-country skiing, Emma Lunder, who we've been talking a lot about this year, uh, took an eighth place in that event. And I'm always particularly, sorry, this is the biathlon mass start. Uh, I'm always impressed uh, when it comes to, uh, <laughs> Kit Ray goes, what a useless producer. <laughs> That's my co-host on my show, who um, yes. Around the Horn, just so everybody knows. My show, <laughs> Around the Horn, Wednesdays yes. on Cryer, my show. Yes. Your show, okay. He keeps on saying that he should be, he's liking this idea of uh, audio only. <laughs> An audio only, Ryan. <laughs> so that he so make sure you tune into my show when Ray shows up as a guest every uh, Wednesday. It's great. <laughs> I actually, you know, I'm part of a, a little murder mystery like that that has a, has two psychics, and uh, one of them keeps on saying my show, my show, and then the other one keeps on going our show. <laughs> 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 I'm going to be favorite star on my show, our show, and this is my sidekick co-host. <laughs> sidekick co-host. <laughs> it, remind, it reminds me of the uh, the old Eddie Murphy bit when he's talking about when Johnny Carson got divorced. And they were splitting up the assets and Johnny Carson was worth $300 million and his wife at the time was working at a boutique. Well, now it's $300 million and $70, Johnny. So I get half. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I love it. Uh, and in uh, another uh, race, uh, the individual in Ostersund, uh, Emma Lunder, then picked up a fifth. So a fifth and an eighth uh, within a few days. Um, Absolutely amazing performance from her. Uh, she's going to go places. We better watch out for her uh, come next Winter Olympics. She might uh, be making some noise. And also in biathlon, uh, Canadian men and women's relay teams had top 10 finishes. Um, so just wonderful stuff. And for anybody who was uh, paying attention out in Charlottetown, we had the Canada Winter Games, uh, which came to a close. Um, and uh, by all accounts, uh, the people of Prince Edward Island, um, you know, had their traditional hospitality for which they are well known and everybody loves them and everybody had a wonderful time. So congratulations to all our athletes who are doing us proud and congratulations to all our artists who are doing us proud. Um, you give us a lot to brag about. We're, you know, we punch above our weight and uh, we're very, very, very glad uh, that you give us the opportunity to talk about some stuff that's a little happy because <laughs> the show gets heavy every now and then. Yee. Ah, all right. Uh, Kits, that's what I have for you today. Um, like I said, I tried to keep it a little more happy and tried to give you just a little touch of some politics, not to be completely off topic, but I don't want to scoop too much because there's some stuff I want to share while Mr. Grizzly's there, so I'm saving it. Um, 
if you are um, with us this weekend, please remember that it's Pubcast weekend. So Saturday at around 2 p.m. Eastern, uh, we will be broadcasting live from the Lieutenant's Pump in Ottawa, the nation's capital. Um, Pub chat, conversation, just relaxed atmosphere, a chance for you to get a to know a different side of your favorite podcast critters. No politics. Not on Pub Chat Day. There's there's a there's a video in here. Is that actually like a, a plug for it? Should I play that? Absolutely, please do. Yes. Welcome to the place where everyone knows your name, where everyone's your friend, where good times are had by all. Sit back, relax, pour yourself a beverage and enjoy our company. I know we'll certainly enjoy yours. Welcome to the True North Eager Beaver Pubcast. Once a month, we gather at the Lieutenant's Pump at 361 Elgin Street in downtown Ottawa, Canada's capital city, bringing you joy and happiness all day long. <laughs> ah, ah, bringing you joy and happiness all day long. Yes, that's that's the booze part, right? That's the booze part. Okay, just booze checking. Talking. <laughs> that's the booze talk. <laughs> just, just making sure. That's the joy and happiness. Understood. 10 4. <laughs> Producer well, out. And, and then, of course, there's our sunny dispositions, of course. <laughs> I'm always curious when I watch about yes. what you guys are going to order for food. That's my uh, biggest thing. I always wait to see what, what's for lunch. That's kind of my favorite thing. Maybe we should take bets. That's what I was gonna say. You guys, like a bet three sixty five. We could totally get something side action going here. Maybe some 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 actual money. We can do parlays. What's the second drink gonna be along with the chicken fingers? It'd be great. How many how many times do I, how many times will I dunk my fries? How many times will each? Is there an over under on the number of pee breaks? Uh, I'm see the number. There's so many things we could do. A horse man about a horse. Yes. Right. Yes. Uh, All right. You know what? We, we, you know what? We, we've got some business here. Ray and I have uh, Ray and I have some experience with bookies, so we'll uh, we'll totally set you up. <laughs> <laughs> Ray's a bit of a shit disturber tonight. We're the we're the devils on the shoulder of the angels of the network. So uh, we'll see you on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Mr. Otter taking initiative, interrupting the show, and asking how to do his job. <laughs> Get <laughs> Linda goes. Let us pick what you have for lunch. <laughs> okay. I, I'm just I'm just here trying to help, and I'm apparently already in trouble. So <laughs> I can't wait until next Wednesday. It's going to be fun. Uh oh! Tell me about next Wednesday. We're actually gonna uh, we were gonna talk to you about that too, and I might as well do it on the air so that that way you're kind of bound to it. We'd like to have you as a guest uh, to come around the horn with uh, with Ray, Mike, and I. Ooh. Where we uh, take you bring up bring a topic with you to the table. Don't okay. tell us about it prior. Okay. It's it's usually pretty. It's it's lighthearted. It can be serious. It doesn't have to be. It can be anything you want to talk about. And you want to have a discussion with with <laughs> as we said, the most important podcast on the on on the internet because it's three straight white guys because we don't hear enough from three straight white guys on podcasts. So oh, um, yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, we're gonna we're, we're we're totally gonna send out a formal invitation for you to come and join us, and uh, you bring a you bring that topic, and then we uh, we just dis- we discuss it, and then you discuss the other topics that are on with the other hosts as well. So, okay, is, is it's it, a fun is time. This Wednesday, uh, we well actually we tape on Mondays, and and the and the show airs oh. on Wednesdays. So okay. um, it, we'll reach out. Tapes, yep, if it tapes, okay, if it tapes Mondays, the answer is absolutely, positively, definitely. Most assuredly, maybe. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I love you. That's yes. fantastic. We, uh, yeah, we we had a uh, we we had a discussion prior to this show going live tonight. And said, I'd really like to get Douglas on that show, and Ray's like, absolutely, you love Douglas. So, yeah, we're uh, we're totally going to uh, we'll, we'll we'll send details this week. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, I thank you. To, yes, it's an honor and a privilege. Yes, I accept. <laughs> I'm going to hit mute because every time you and I stay on a podcast alone together, it goes till 3 a.m. So I'm going to stop talking. (laughs) It's a school night, Douglas. 
<laughs> it's a school night. Okay, kids. Well, you know what? I think we have an episode. <laughs> so, kids, that's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver podcast, uh, or this take two of the Daily Beaver podcast. <laughs> we hope you love listening to us because we loved making this for you. And thank you so much to the kids who have joined us this evening. Because especially for those, uh, I mean, everyone, of course, but if you made time to join this morning and you are also joining this evening, thank you so very much in your kindness. Um, ah, yes, Kit Elaine Snuggles, because I'm all about the snuggles. <laughs> you should put me on, a, you should put my picture on a bottle of fabric softer. <laughs> I tell you, man, it's like, you know, the, the advertisers that choir, man, it's like, I could do toothpaste commercials. I can do Pantene commercials, and I can do fabric softer commercials. Because you like hire me, man. <laughs> Pimp me out, crier. Pimp me out. Okay, now um, remember, sharing is caring, and word of mouth is priceless. So please let your peeps know about us. And you really are um, the number of people who have been subscribing to our YouTube feed has just uh, really grown. Uh, we were at 162 like a couple of days ago, maybe a week ago, and we've crossed the 180. And it's you know normally we have 15 or 16 joined per month, but we've had like 20 joined in the last little bit. So thank you, and our Twitter feed is coming close to a thousand. So uh, <sighs> you know what? I'm I'm my cup runneth over. So I'm, I'm very grateful for your enthusiasm and your support. So thank you. Thank you very much. Um, because democracy is something you do, we're going to keep saying it because so long as this BS is going on, write your senators, write your MP, write your MPP, write your local media station, find out. Yep. Let them know. Let them know that you are not standing for this. Let them know you don't want this Nazi shit. Let them know that you are not standing for this type of reporting where you only get half the story. Let them know that you are not um, keen on, for example, one of our national political parties simply engaging in. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> My seat just went down. Um, interested in random character assassination. I mean, over the past couple of weeks, you know, we've seen absolutely anybody and everybody that's sort of been put up as someone who could give us any type of clarity or reliability or real information about what's going on with regard to either attempted election influence or the state of our elections or like just be completely, completely torn apart. And even people that they've hired, even people that have worked for them, even the people about whom they themselves have said, even in the House of Commons, that they are of unimpeachable character, people that they've made honorary citizens, <laughs> even over the course uh, of this prime minister's mandate. There has been nobody, there has been nobody that has not been fodder for the thump thump of the conservative bus. It's irresponsible journalism. It does not seek to inform us at all. You're the boss. You're the customer. When it comes to media and you're the boss when it comes to the MPs, you're allowed to say, we demand better. We demand better. So if you have the time, you know, I know it sounds... There might be some people that are cynical. Well, that stuff doesn't work and it doesn't really matter. Like, it really, truly does. So if you do have a couple of minutes to actually just let someone know that you actually care, right? as Jen said, let's all be Karens about it. Yeah, Karens and Kevins of the Beaver Lodge. <laughs> Talk to the manager. <laughs> right? <laughs> if you like this podcast, you can find us on the Cryer Media Network as well as all Beaver Grizzly friendly platforms. Stars and reviews are appreciated. And kits, uh, we've arrived. We've got our first hate review. Yeah. We had a perfect 5.0 in stars, and somebody came along and gave us one star to bring us down to 4.7. That means we're bothering people. 
that means we're having an impact. That's a good thing. <laughs> Come on. Make us popular. Make us popular. If you really like <laughs> if you really like to hear from us, we like to hear from you too. So please reach us on our Facebook at our Twin North Eager Beaver on our Facebook page. If you go to at uh, at True Eager on Twitter, well then you'll find our Twitter feed. And if you want to communicate with us by email, then True North Eager Beaver at gmail.com is the address. And we read everything. And we appreciate it. So thank you very much, kids. And if you would like to subscribe to us so that you get whatever we create when it's fresh off the bandwidth, then you can go to our pod page, podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver with hyphens throughout each one of these words. And I'm just realizing right now that one of the reasons I seem to have trouble with this extra is because I usually have Mr. Grizzly interrupting me through it. <laughs> saying things and i don't have anybody doing that right now so i'm I'm actually i never have a flow for the end (laughs) so now today i'm supposed to have a flow and i don't have one i'm without flow there you go uh why not also subscribe to our true north eager beaver media incorporated youtube channel and that helps us out big time as we mentioned and you have been doing it so keep on being awesome all right the old gray mare she ain't what she used to be ain't what she i'm just trying to come up with something to interrupt you with that's all (laughs) <laughs> very very mr grizzly style too completely non-secure <laughs> i got this thing over here uh while you're i know you're talking i know you're talking about like the plight of children in ukraine but have you seen this platform shoe thing <laughs> <laughs> the sorry the strippers used jelly heels starting in 1978 <laughs> Jelly Hill. <laughs> there, I just uh, I, I was just going with non sequiturs. I'm sorry. <laughs> was it a chunky heel or a stiletto? Well, the chunky heel wasn't invented until 1982 uh, by uh, Chunky Heel. Chunk. Charlotte Chunk. <laughs> Charlotte Chunk. Yes, in, 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 in southern Fer- in, southern, in southern France. All right. A, 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 a far distant re- related uh, relative to uh, Pierre Brassier and uh, Otto Kitzner. <laughs> he had his hands full. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good joke. <laughs> I didn't think I could hold it up. <laughs> oh, 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 man. Ah, oh, gee. Well, you know, it's always good when you get a little lift. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> cross my heart. <laughs> uh, we can't do this without your kind and generous support. <laughs> so, if you feel, <laughs> oh, great. Last two couple shows ago, we had poop and peep jokes. Now we have bra jokes. <laughs> I see joy. I gave you guys kudos for that, by the way. Welcome. Welcome to the basement. Thank you so much. <laughs> just just tell us where on the floor we sleep and give us a bowl of water. We'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> we can't do this without your kind and generous support. So if you feel that we've done a particularly good show, uh, if you're watching, you can scan that QR code and I'm going to try and point and get it right <laughs> there. You see, I, I really committed to that one. Eh? Uh, so if you uh, bring your camera to that, that'll bring you to our coffee page. And if you are listening, then you have to let your fingers do the walking and go to ko-fi.com slash eager beaver, all in one word, lowercase letters. That's ko-fi.com. ko-fi.com. <laughs> Ah, I'm tripping over my tongue. That's coffee, ko-fi.com slash eager beaver. Huh. Mr. Grizzly leaves for one show and I fall apart. <laughs> That's where you go to make your donation. Of course, uh, merch is not available at the moment, but uh, we hope to have that back online for you soon and hopefully with some uh, cups because you've been asking for them. So hopefully we'll have some designs. From the Beaver Lodge, this is your eager beaver saying, until next time, dear kids, it could be a tough world out there. So please be kind to and gentle with yourselves. And uh, since I don't have Mr. Grizzly, uh, Mr. Otter, you're on duty. What are your words of wisdom to send us off? Oh, I didn't know I was, I, I didn't know I was on the spot here. Uh, there you go. I guess I can, I'll pop in just for a second. Whoa. Hi. Hey. <laughs> Look at that heat. Look at that face. 
Um, try to um, find a hat that covers your whole head. Oh, no, it's not here. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, <laughs> keep it okay. between the ditches. Okay. Um, don't consume yellow snow. Okay. As a matter of fact, in 2023, in a 500-mile radius of Ohio, don't consume any snow. Okay. Um, and, uh, yeah. Uh, just, just eat, you know what? Eat the dessert, do it. Um, eat, eat the, eat the, eat the extra cheese. If they say cheese, say more, just do it. You know why? All you're doing is saving the, the, the years at the end where you, you poo and pee in your pants. So, you know what? Nobody likes those years anyway. Um, just, just enjoy today. How about that? How about enjoy, try to enjoy today. That's a good one. I think, um, we, yeah. Under that? Should I give you yeah. some Jeopardy thinking music? No. That's actually nice. I like that. Yeah, just enjoy today. That's my word of advice. Enjoy today. Don't worry about tomorrow. Um, stop worrying about yesterday. And enjoy today. <laughs> some bra right. chair. And wear sunscreen. Okay, kids. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's actually a good one. <laughs> Mr. Otter, would you please roll the credits? And thank you. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. <laughs> You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver media podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum, and the Peppermaster, Hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. And kids, you, before we you go, didn't I think I was, that. you didn't think yeah. I was leaving without that shot. Oh no, I know you weren't. Because as <laughs> Linda said, other advice: don't wear a hat when you can wear a crown. That's my guy.